Ladies and gentlemen, KK Mirror, welcome to the daily update. Hope you guys had a good day trading today. Market is up about 0.6%. They are on the SMB NASDAQ 0.9%. Semiconductor 1.5%. Dow 0.4%. Russell 2000. Transport banks, energy, biotech, healthcare, home builders, utilities, retail, emerging market, every single sectors are seemingly green today. Bitcoin flag, gold, silver miners are up, dollar up, oil up, dollar down, oil up, treasury bond up. The rates are down. Uh, VIX is down about half a percentage there. Let's stick with SAP Founder ETF. Spider! 65 minutes are here. So this is what we closed yesterday. It looks like we actually saw another gap up this morning here. However, you can see on that right on that first hour, we met with that secondary resistance, which we talked about on the last night's video. And with that, you can see not able to get above that level here. So that's the first hour. Second hour, you see that little tail. However, there's one small mistake the Bears made here. They did not fill the gap right here, the entirety of this up gap. So leaving a little bit of that up gap like that, it's going to favor the buyers. So as you can see, when the gap wasn't fully filled, uh, buyers kind of took the chance here. And so you can see on the fifth hour and sixth hour, and we close just right underneath that resistance all the way from right here. You can see that's the September peak right that's that 4 17 or 18 or so and that level has been acting as pretty solid resistance all throughout as you can see here 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 right and that those uh, these peaks right here when bulls were not able to get above that level that's when things got very very extremely difficult for the buyers here and so that's the level we're dealing with obviously this is a level where uh, bears are threatening to you know shoot down the buyers once again so this is a level because you know uh buyers were able to clear the first level of resistance uh yesterday with the gap of as you can see uh this level right there and so this is the level that bulls must clear uh at least uh you know early next week if not tomorrow if they want to go and the retest that 408 vicinity, that's the recent swing high because we're still dealing with midterm downtrend, right? We're still in the vicinity of lower high, right? Uh, counting this as, a, uh, you know, that previous lower high and that's that secondary lower high. And this, this right here could still be that uh, you know, lower high, we're still in the vicinity of lower high. So when they're looking at things in the midterm of things, technically speaking, as of today, we're still in the downtrend phase, right? So obviously the buyers want to break that curse because buyers been faithfully cultivating this shorter term, short to midterm or so, uh, uptrend here with the higher highs. And this is yet again, another higher high here. So right, we got this uh, we got this that uptrend going on here while well, we got this downtrend going on, right? If the buyers want to turn this into a reversal and nullify this downtrend, they must get up and make at least equal highs. Then it is no longer lower high. Then we'll consider this as a equal high. So once we see that equal high put in, then we can say that we're no longer in a downtrend. We're we're now uh not you know neutralized zone where market might possibly even building a base uh before it can make that higher low and turn it into midterm uptrend that's how you know when that trend is uh fully shifted right so let's say let's say we see something like this in the next week or so let's say this is what happens right then you can see this would be Right, this will be where buyers have nullified that midterm downtrend and it has established its own uptrend in the midterm once we clear above 408. So now then we're no longer can say they were a bearish downtrend in the midterm once this swing high gets reclaimed and clear above. So you can see we're just right on that falling resistance. 
And I think this is a level where if the buyers want the most, uh, the most smooth transition possible to the upside, just because you know this uh, resistance uh, do have some weights here, I think gapping it up one more time to the upside will help to make that transition much faster. Just because we're still dealing with overbought sentiment here, as you can see, the buyers did push it quite a bit in the last. A week and a half or so. Let's check out that oscillator. So you can see when we look at that oscillator, we're kind of getting into that level where the oscillator hitting that overbought zone. This is why I was talking about we're still in the vicinity of potential lower high in the midterm. As you can see, uh this peak right here and this is where that happened again that was overbought right you see this peak that happened that was overbought and we finally got there very close to that level right and that's this vicinity so bears uh they really need to uh protect this resistance and they really want to if they want this downtrend to continue they do not want the buyers continue to advance and fill this uh, down gap. You see this down gap right? That wasn't fully filled. Remember what I said about today's price section, right? See, so today what I said was that if this, this up gap not being filled, right? That's gonna favor the buyers if he stays open. And that's exactly what I said for the bears as well. So I'm not being biased here. I'm just seeing what I see in the price section. And, and 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 giving you the probability of certain outcomes so you can see there is a down gap that was never filled and keep in mind and that's when things got really really active. even when this thing came back up right subsequently even then the gap wasn't filled that's when this really fast tankage came about <gasps> you see that so that's what i'm saying that little gap could do so much Perfect. If this up gap remains open, left unfilled, so bears really need to make sure not only protect this falling resistance, right? And it needs to go down and fill that down gap as well. So that oscillator being overbought, uh, there's a couple of things bull can, bulls can still make things work is that instead of, uh, you know, getting this oscillator tank all the way back down, and that's obviously what the bears want to see, just having that oscillator coming all the way back down and reset. What the buyers can do, they can actually make this oscillator oscillate back and forth at the top of his band, kind of similar to what it happened here. This was more of a middle of band, but more at the top of his band and have a minimal pullbacks or whatnot. But you know, at this point, because we're still dealing with the overbought level. So what bulls want to do here is that I think the best case scenario is gapping it up. Cause I think the gap up, the gap up doesn't really move the oscillator. So gap up is pretty much like a, a free, uh, you know, energy that it can use. And you know what I'm saying? And, and, and without uh, trying to utilize that oscillator sentiment here. So. I think gapping up, even if let's say it gaps up, right? Let's say it gaps up and then it fades, right? That will be better. Gap up and fade and fill the gap and then that level being a support and utilizing prior resistance here as new support, right? So even though, because we're dealing with the overbought sentiment, even though if we see a gap, but it may fade because bulls are tired. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? That's better because now you can come back down, fade, get fill that gap. If there is going to be an up gap, right? If there's going to be up gap, and then use this resistance as new support, and then maybe consolidate or some sort here above this resistance and have that oscillator cross back up and then push it up to go forward, right? So we've seen that happen quite a bit previously. If you've been watching my videos, you know, when, when the market start to build, a momentum as at least for the buyers uh, that's the thing that buyers can able to do so this this is a this is important juncture for both bulls and bears i'm gonna come back for you we'll reassess the situation enjoy your evening of training tomorrow two hours later so this is a daily chart, right? You looked at 65 minutes chart earlier. Now we're looking at the daily chart.
exact same setup here but different moving average settings and obviously with the daily oscillate perfect uh, what's interesting here is that first of all we just witnessed and this is kind of uh what i was uh you know uh following up in the last uh, at least a couple weeks here you can see some of these moving averages uh crossing to the other you see that there's a cluster moving average they're all crossing up to the upside uh, something similar was gonna happen here but it never fully crossed up we failed and came back down but here we can see that it's crossing up. why is that important because in the past when we do see that micro term and the short term moving averages crosses up like that here right that's uh that's the um uh, that's the august price action that's the october and november and right here that's january and is happening here today in late march what happened was looking at this uh, several occasions here all, every single time when we did see that short term and the micro term moving average cross to the upside we did see remember keep in mind this is a daily chart so each candle represent one day worth of data we did see about three to four weeks of bullish rally to the upside with fluctuations along the way of course uh so you can see that and and what happened was uh in, in november and january what what happened was we actually cultivated you can see that low higher low higher low right because it, it's definitive uh definitive we can see that that low is definitely slightly higher than this low uh this low is is much higher than this uh this low right and that's what we call higher lows uh, you can see that there's swing low, uh, you know lower high there and then there's high higher high there's a slight higher high so even looking at the daily uh you, buyers are since the october lows uh you know been very subtly this building this this trend this 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 is kind of sort of a midterm trend with these subtle higher lows and higher highs <gasps> Yay. Yay. as you can see here this is actually early uh march earlier this month there's that signal that came about we had a very very abrupt sell-off uh in like late february you guys remember this just all of a sudden we got up and just quickly tanked it was very similar price section to here right uh what we witnessed in october right you see that very fast decline and then it made that lower low uh, again very very fast decline it made that lower low and then we saw that very quick pop there but what happened was when that happened on that oscillator we formed right because what happened was we did have that we got that lower low on the price section right same thing here in october november lower low price section but that oscillator was elevated right you see oscillators that elevated is is it's not it wasn't confirmed right because again that oscillator wasn't crossed back up it was you can see we're still in that transition transitioning to cross down it 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 didn't confirm that bullish divergence but it had this form right do you ever like play tennis and you you can, you can kind of see their form you can kind of see what they're gonna do if it's gonna be a backhand or forehand it, it's like it had this form like okay that that's kind of similar to what i you know the price action similar you know similar to what we witnessed um you know in the uh during october lows uh, we got that bullish divergence formation but we need more so you know when, when we've been uh looking at the 65 minutes all throughout the month of march there's a lot of shenanigans right but this daily chart well, has been faithful right so you can see ever since that signal confirmed that confirmed once it crossed up right here as you can see once that signal confirmed even though especially a couple weeks ago week and a half ago or something like that after the fed minutes remember the big tankage here even though we had a huge tankage this signal was faithful right this is why people get way too and that's kind of what i talked about last week even on my youtube video that you will see these shenanigans but you know it's the overall picture that's going to matter so despite the fact that all that you know you can see all these uh, gap downs gap ups big phase shenanigans along the way and you know when we're analyzing 65 minute chart it was just all over the place that's what it seemed like but look when we look at the daily chart it was actually pretty consistent after that bullish divergence formation has confirmed and today we not only we have bullish divergence, bullish divergence still working right and uh, to add to that, we still have, we do have that, you know, minor term and micro term, uh, you know, the uh, moving averages cross right here. 
and that's just signaling right here. That's just flaring up here. You can see they're just crossing up here. And again, every single time since the uh, August uh, low and the October low and the January low, all of these um, signals, especially when we add the uh, bullish divergence to go with it, uh, it, it looks like uh, it's a signal that we may see, uh, you know, higher high, and that could potentially get to about 420 or so to battle with the boss bears there. This is a NASDAQ one all the way back to like 2000. So we're looking at primary, a secular trend of things. But you see right here, when that, that primary to moving average gets never reclaimed, uh, when we're in a true recession bear market, right? The, 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 the secular bear market, it gets never reclaimed here. I'm going to zoom in here. You'll see it gets never reclaimed here. And then it comes down and there's some pop here. It act as a resistance. It, it, it only bottomed, right? It only bottomed when it recovered. You can see even there it's acting as resistance right here. But it recover and reclaims. And then what happens? That crosses occur. That primary term moving average is crosses occur. Same thing happened in 2008, 2009. You see this primary move, that pink dotted moving, acting as resistance. Once that uh, midterm and the short term, that crosses occur, that's when that market bottom, right? I mean, can you imagine if you actually knew this information in back in 2008 and 2009, right? Here we go. So you can see this is 2022 and 2023. Sure enough, you can see the, the long term moving is acting as resistance here, acting as resistance here. We just saw NASDAQ breaking out and all these moving averages slightly start starting to cross right here. And so you can see sentiment is slowly changing. A lot of people are not able to understand and see this because it's very, very subtle. subtle. This is, again, the oscillator. And this is a monthly chart here. So that monthly chart definitely got into the oversold level yes you can see the oversold level that monthly oscillator when it hits oversold when you see a full cross and that's exactly how it bottomed here in 2009 that's how exactly bottomed 2009 here you can see that's kind of what we're seeing here you can so you can see throughout this year so it actually bottomed it actually hit the oversold level during like october 2022 so throughout the month, throughout the year of 2023, in the last three months, January, February, and March, right? Market has been shaking and baking, but this oscillator actually been faithfully uh, staying this way. Once it cross, it stay. You remember how it stay? It stays up like this, even though there's a you know, market has been just kind of moving sideways. You can see the uh, you know the uh, three months. Uh, the uh, Nasdaq did make that move. You got three green candles. Again, this is a monthly chart. Each candle represents one month worth of data. So this is a this is a chart that I actually screened today. So I'm still um, running 2022 special promotion for all plans. On Fridays, I don't uh, produce or publish uh, YouTube videos on Fridays. So on Fridays or on the weekend, for my mini members, what I'll do is I will do combo analysis. So I'll do 65 minute and daily charts combo analysis. We'll look at, uh, you know, we'll look at the the you know the daily oscillator, daily moving averages. We'll look at the gaps. We'll look at the overall trend, uh, and we'll look at some of these signals. But on a daily basis, though, I will send out daily email updates, uh, similar to the one that you just saw here, right? This one I wish was sent out uh, early March, something like. Uh, if you're wondering about um you know what positions i'm currently holding uh if you're wondering about what are the settings on the on your charge k you know what about the moving averages you know what about that oscillator you always show and analyze in these videos uh, i got actually i got 10 more at nine more oscillators that i actually watch i mean that oscillator is my favorite oscillator to oscillator to analyze but there's a, and so if you don't know exactly what oscillators they are, what are the settings, uh, and uh, you want to know what positions I'm currently holding, what I'll be buying, and some of these special reports, you want to uh, take advantage of these special reports I've just released. I released the Cedar Matrix Never Never Failed Signal Revealed Part Two just about a couple of days ago. And so then there's a full number again. These rates been especially marked down for 2023. Uh, and everything about how to analyze this market, everything I know about how to do this, you want to learn about this, uh, definitely uh, take advantage of the full membership here. Yay! Yay! Yay. Hooray!